Philosophical Anthropology, Wikipedia Article Audio Philosophical Anthropology, sometimes called Anthropological Philosophy, is a discipline dealing with questions of metaphysics and phenomenology of the human person, and interpersonal relationships. History Augustine of Hippo was one of the first Christian ancient Latin authors with a very clear anthropological vision, although it is not clear if he had any influence on Max Scheler, the founder of philosophical anthropology as an independent discipline, nor on any of the major philosophers that followed him. Augustine has been cited by Husserl and Heidegger as one of the early writers to inquire on time consciousness and the role of seeing in the feeling of being in the world. Augustine saw the human being as a perfect unity of two substances, soul and body. He was much closer in this anthropological view to Aristotle than to Plato. In his late treatise on care to be had for the dead sector 5 he insisted that the body is essential part of the human person. Ancient Christian Writers, Augustine of Hippo In no wise are the bodies themselves to be spurned. For these pertain not to ornament or aid which is applied from without, but to the very nature of man. Modern Period Augustine's favorite figure to describe body-soul unity is marriage, caro toi, coniax toi your body is your wife. Initially, the two elements were in perfect harmony. After the fall of humanity they are now experiencing dramatic combat between one another. Philosophical Anthropology as Independent Discipline They are two categorically different things. The body is a three-dimensional object composed of the four elements, whereas the soul has no spatial dimensions. Soul is a kind of substance, participating in reason, fit for ruling the body. Augustine was not preoccupied, as Plato and Descartes were, with going too much into detail in his efforts to explain the metaphysics of the soul-body union. It sufficed for him to admit that they were metaphysically distinct. To be a human is to be a composite of soul and body, and that the soul is superior to the body. The latter statement is grounded in his hierarchical classification of things into those that merely exist, those that exist and live, and those that exist, live, and have intelligence or reason. 1920s Germany According to N. Blasks, Augustine's dualism of substances of the body and soul doesn't stop him from seeing the unity of body and soul as a substance itself. Following Aristotle and other ancient philosophers, he defined man as a rational mortal animal animal rationale mortali. From the 1940s Philosophical anthropology as a kind of thought before it was founded as a distinct philosophical discipline in the 1920s, emerged as post-medieval thought striving for emancipation from Christian religion and Aristotelic tradition. The origin of this liberation, characteristic of modernity, has been the Cartesian skepticism formulated by Descartes in the first two of his meditations on first philosophy. Immanuel Kant taught the first lectures on anthropology in the European academic world. He specifically developed a conception of pragmatic anthropology, according to which the human being is studied as a free agent. At the same time, he conceived of his anthropology as an empirical, not a strictly philosophical discipline. Both his philosophical and his anthropological work has been one of the influences in the field during the 19th and 20th century. After Kant, Ludwig Feuerbach is sometimes considered the next most important influence and founder of anthropological philosophy. Anthropology of Interpersonal Relationships Michael D. Jackson's Study of Intersubjectivity Notes
During the 19th century, an important contribution came from post-Kantian German idealists like Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel, as well from Sren Kierkegaard. From the late 19th century till the early 20th century, influential contributors have been Friedrich Nietzsche, John Dewey, and Rudolf Steiner. Since its development in the 1920s, in the milieu of Germany Weimar culture, philosophical anthropology has been turned into a philosophical discipline, competing with the other traditional sub-disciplines of epistemology, ethics, metaphysics, aesthetics. It is the attempt to unify disparate ways of understanding behavior of humans as both creatures of their social environments and creators of their own values. Although the majority of philosophers throughout the history of philosophy can be said to have a distinctive anthropology that undergirds their thought, philosophical anthropology itself, as a specific discipline in philosophy, arose within the later modern period as an outgrowth from developing methods in philosophy, such as phenomenology and existentialism. The former, which draws its energy from methodical reflection on human experience as from the philosopher's own personal experience, naturally aided the emergence of philosophical explorations of human nature and the human condition. Max Scheler from 1900 till 1920 had been a follower of Husserl's phenomenology, the hegemonic form of philosophy in Germany at the time. Scheler sought to apply Husserl's phenomenological approach to different topics. From 1920 Scheler laid the foundation for philosophical anthropology as a philosophical discipline, competing with phenomenology and other philosophic disciplines. Husserl and Martin Heidegger, were the two most authoritative philosophers in Germany at the time, and their criticism to philosophical anthropology and Scheler have had a major impact on the discipline. Scheler defined the human being not so much as a rational animal but essentially as a loving being. He breaks down the traditional hylomorphic conception of the human person, and describes the personal being with a tripartite structure of lived body, soul, and spirit. Love and hatred are not psychological emotions, but spiritual, intentional acts of the person, which he categorizes as intentional feelings. Scheler based his philosophical anthropology in a Christian metaphysics of the spirit. Helmuth Plessner would later emancipate philosophical anthropology from Christianity. Helmuth Plessner and Arnold Gellin have been influenced by Scheler, and they are the three major representatives of philosophical anthropology as a movement. Ernst Cassirer, a Neo-Kantian philosopher, has been the most influential source for the definition and development of the field from the 1940s till the 1960s. Particularly influential has been Kassirer's description of man as a symbolic animal, which has been reprised in the 1960s by Gilbert Durand, scholar of symbolic anthropology and the imaginary. In 1953, Future Pope Karol Wojtyla based his dissertation thesis on Max Scheler, limiting himself to the works Scheler wrote before rejecting Catholicism and the Judeo-Christian tradition in 1920. Wojtyla used Scheler as an example that phenomenology could be reconciled with Catholicism. Some authors have argued that Wojtyla influenced philosophical anthropology. In the 20th century, other important contributors and influences to philosophical anthropology have been Paul Haberlin, Martin Buber, E.R. Dodds, Hans George Gadamer, Eric Vugelin, Hans Jonas, Joseph Piper, Hans Eduard Hungstenberg, Jean Paul Sartre, Joseph Marichal, Maurice Merleau Ponty, Paul Ricoeur. René Girard, Alastair McIntyre, Pierre Bourdieu, Hans Blumenberg, 
Jacques Derrida, Emmerich Korath, Leonardo Polo. A large focus of philosophical anthropology is also interpersonal relationships, as an attempt to unify disparate ways of understanding the behavior of humans as both creatures of their social environments and creators of their own values. It analyzes also the ontology that is in play in human relationships of which intersubjectivity is a major theme. Intersubjectivity is the study of how two individuals, subjects, whose experiences and interpretations of the world are radically different understand and relate to each other. Recently anthropology has begun to shift towards studies of intersubjectivity and other existential-slash-phenomenological themes. Studies of language have also gained new prominence in philosophy and sociology due to language's close ties with the question of intersubjectivity. The academic Michael D. Jackson is another important philosophical anthropologist. His research and field work concentrate on existential themes of being in the world as well as interpersonal relationships. His methodology challenges traditional anthropology due to its focus on first-person experience. In his most well-known book, Minima Ethnographica which focuses on intersubjectivity and interpersonal relationships, he draws upon his ethnographic fieldwork in order to explore existential theory. In his latest book, Existential Anthropology, he explores the notion of control, stating that humans anthropomorphize inanimate objects around them in order to enter into an interpersonal relationship with them. In this way humans are able to feel as if they have control over situations that they cannot control because rather than treating the object as an object, they treat it as if it is a rational being capable of understanding their feelings and language. Good examples are prayer to gods to alleviate drought or to help a sick person or cursing at a computer that has ceased to function. Philosophical anthropology is a kind of thought arising in times of crisis. The main anthropologists, Max Scheler and Helmuth Plesner, share the same opinion has appeared as a consequence of the shaking of the Middle Ages order, the roots of which were Greek tradition and Christian religion. Feuerbach interpreted philosophical anthropologism as the summary of the entire previous development of philosophical thought. Feuerbach was thus the father of the comprehensive system of anthropological philosophy. In modern thought, according to Buber, Feuerbach was the most important contributor to philosophical anthropology, next to Kant because he posited man as the exclusive object of philosophy. Enter 1920 ERER prominent Jordan, ve damals aus verschiedenen Denkrichtung in und Motiven die Frage nach dem Mens Chen in die mit der Philosophischen Problematik rucked. Die Philosophische Anthropologie wurde so sie einer neuen Disziplin in der Philosophie neben den in G-Farten Subdisziplin in der Erkenntnis Theorie, der Ethik, der Metaphysik, der Aesthetik. Bibliography <laughs>